Hey everybody, how you doing? Well, another day, another story of a disastrous decision and actions made by, in this instance, not Shang Tao Okamir herself, but her key aide, her chief of staff, Lee Hansen, who really seems to have it in for Oakland. Yeah, I'm saying it just like that. Lee has it in for Oakland. There's no other way to put it. There is no other way to think about it. But if you take her comments in total with respect to economic development in Oakland, which is the mayor's job, that's in the charter, okay? Then this person who was you know, most noted for her work with Glide Memorial, not economic development, has waded into, or I think by her behavior, uh, kind of, uh, you know, pushed her way into or insinuated her way into because of her title, uh, has managed to arguably be the instrument of the A's departure. And the only people cheering are people who don't live in Oakland. I don't know of anyone in Oakland that's cheering outside of the mayor's office, which, by the way, likes to announce that they go to 510, Sean Sullivan's bar, Sean and his husband's, uh, Richard uh, Fuentes' bar. Great, 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 great dudes. Uh, not an indictment against them by any means. But my whole point is, it's not a good idea to announce that you went drinking after a controversial decision. I mean, the way that we did it in, when I worked for Oakland Mayor Lee Harris is we went to the Golden Bear. You called it Agenda 99, all right? And that was to celebrate the end of the city council day. But we weren't celebrating any particular initiative because we realized how that would look politically, okay? Which just goes to show you the degree to which Lee Hansen and her boss are political neophytes. They think it's okay, and Lee thinks it's okay to open her mouth and talk to Tim Keown, formerly of the Chronicle, now with ESPN, and just lay out her heart about, oh, what a big hero she thinks she is, and taking down the hated Oakland Athletics president, Dave Cobble, and talking to him in a way that's nasty on his turf and that sort of thing, you know? That's what she did. She acted like, just by the way it was captured by what she explained to Tim Keown, she acted like this person who was what she is, new to these situations with powerful sports executives over discussing million dollar facilities and lease terms that can make or break a city economically. And I don't mean in terms of what the city spends, I mean in terms of just the total impact, okay? She has no clue, Lee Hansen, what she's doing at all, none. Let me give you an example before I turn to Tim's article and my the center point of my displeasure with her behavior uh, but that th she's made over the years, all right? She said such things as, for example, luckily, this is again referring to the athletics, luckily we made more money with one exhibition soccer game at the Coliseum than we do through the entire A season, so they won't be missed. And she's talking about the city of Oakland. Lee, right there, who she has zero clue, I mean, no clue, Lee. Lee, you have no clue what you're doing. All right. The A's are a tenant in the Coliseum. So any negotiation that you conduct should be on behalf of the Coliseum and not the city of Oakland. You did this Coliseum a disservice by miles. You are the first person to do it, and hopefully the last. There ought to be a resolution that no one in your position touches any city of Oakland facility 
be it a port facility or the Coliseum at all. You know, as I say, touch it. I mean, you don't make decisions about it direct, directly. You hire a specialist, someone who is comfortable in these situations, who doesn't go off showing their arse in these situations, someone that isn't trying to make themselves known nationally without thinking about the consequences, like, for example, videos like this one, okay? And this is not going to be the last one because someone needs to be the counter to the damage that you've done because it is considerable. It is absolutely considerable. The Oakland Athletics, while they are here for the next year season, are still a main, excuse me, major, excuse me, number one tenant at the Oakland Amelia County Coliseum Stadium. Period. Number one. When the Oakland Athletics go to, say, uh, Seattle, what do they do, Lee, that benefits Oakland? Since you said, and I'm quoting here, luckily we made more money with one exhibition shocker game at the Coliseum than we do throughout the entire A's season. All right. You know what the A's do when they go to Seattle? They import, they bring the A's do the Oakland name with them so that when people go online to search about the athletics, there's the opportunity for anyone doing so to learn more about Oakland places to visit places to eat places to stay historic landmarks, historic people, and so on. There is that opportunity. It is the city's job through visit Oakland or, or their comparable Convention and Visitors Bureau, ours is called Visit Oakland, to make absolutely certain that Oakland is represented in these national broadcasts to the greatest degree possible. That's also true if you have, say, the Warriors playing it in the NBA Finals at the Coliseum in Oakland. It's even reasonable to have a request if they are in San Francisco doing the same thing. Why? It's the Bay Area. And why not? Because when the Warriors were playing in the NBA Finals and they were headquartered in Oakland, the broadcasters still looked at San Francisco as the point where we had to do a collective hue and cry to get them to stop. Where is Oakland now when the Warriors are headed back to the playoffs yet again? Do you have a plan to take advantage of the eyeballs that should be made to focus on Oakland even a little bit? No. That's got to change. So that's why I'm saying, Lee, you have no business in this because what happens is that you look from a layperson's eyes, you talk from a layperson's eyes, but you have the unfortunate for this situation place of being a representative of the mayor's office. And the mayor's office is expected, like it or not, to know better. It is expected, like it or not, to have its fingertips on the controls of those people who are competent enough to be in those meetings, like with Dave Cobble and the other A's executives, John Fisher, was, John Fisher wasn't there, to understand the situation, make the right comments, and come out with the right deal. Let me put it this way. You're supposed to come out of there with a deal. You didn't. You blew it. Okay? You blew it. You blew it. And unfortunately, there's no one other than the electorate itself to fire you. As far as I'm concerned, you need to be fired for what you did. Because you didn't come away with a deal. You came away with not only not a deal, but a media entry, which makes you look unprofessional. I don't care who you get accolades from. Anyone who is stupid enough to send you accolades is absolutely out of pocket. Shouldn't do it. Stay off. Don't do it. Don't do it at all. Okay? Okay? All right? I mean, 
this isn't this is not funny. This is really tragic, really serious. When a person watches the A's and it's a home game at the Coliseum, what is that? It sells Oakland. It's at the Coliseum. It sells the Coliseum. It sells the atmosphere. And don't tell me the mayor isn't aware of the eyeballs the A's draw because, hey, look, she managed to insert herself at the fan fest. Whereas she wasn't even at the previous fan fest or the one after that or the one after that or as council member. She was clearly there. Shang Tao was for a political purpose. Okay. All around trying to embarrass the athletics because they decided to move directly because the city did not understand how to implement tax increment financing, did not understand how to complete a project in a timely fashion. Okay. All right. Okay. This is what we're, this is what you, you've done, Lee. You caused a great deal of damage. Now let's get to, oh, and by the way, when you say this, that you, again, I'm going to triple down on this. Luckily, we made more money with one exhibition soccer game at the Coliseum than we do the entire A season. You forgot to add advertising costs per ratings point. What does that mean? It's what's paid to show commercials during any broadcast. Why was it important? Because when I was pitching the Super Bowl or Oakland as Super Bowl host to the National Football League and to NFL owners like those who sat on the Super Bowl Policy Committee at the time, including NFL CEO Neil Austrian, Colts owner Jim Irsay, Giants co-owner Bob Tisch, the late Lamar Hunt as well, the legendary Kansas City Chiefs owner, and Jim Steig, the senior vice president of special events for the NFL with the moniker Mr. Super Bowl. Not to mention, not to mention, before that, or after that, excuse me, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell, who wasn't commissioner, he was NFL Executive Vice President of Football Operations, and NFL Commissioner Paul Tagliabue at his office after the Super Bowl Policy Committee the next year, 2000. My job was to make a case for not just Oakland, but the Bay Area. And what I explained was that in terms of advertising costs per ratings point, the Bay Area was among the most valuable areas from a media standpoint. That is still true today, even in this internet age. And yet you don't consider that when you mention the athletics performing the entire season. What is wrong with you, Lee? What is wrong with you? You had no business doing that, none. It was inappropriate for you to be in that meeting, in that position. First of all, that exchange should not even have occurred there. And I am shocked that Coliseum Joint Powers Authority Chairman, Oakland Council Member Rebecca Kaplan allowed that. I am shocked that Dave Halbert, Alameda County Supervisor, who replaced Scott Haggerty, would allow it, but hey, I'll give him a mulligan because he's mulligan because he's new. All right. But that should have been at Coliseum JPA headquarters. It should have been at the Coliseum. Not at the A's office. <sighs> 
You blew it, Lee. You blew it big time. You blew it horribly. And arguably, you have set us back 50 years by not just your lousy representation in terms of the way you talk to Dave Clowell, which I'll get to in a moment, but how you talked about the athletics, sending the message to any business, large or small, that, hey, your administration of your boss, Oakland Mayor Shane Tao, and you don't like anybody in business, particularly the sports business, all right? What you think the sports business is, okay? Because you don't know. You understand? You have no idea. You have zero clue, okay? Look at this. This gets me to the pablum you fed to Mr. Kion, all right? Now, before I continue here, let me get to Sir Chai. He says, Hanson chased away sports. Yep. He says, I read the article on ESPN. No wonder Dave Cobble hung up the phone. Actually, it wasn't so much he hung up the phone. What Lee said to him, and I'm going to get to, is such that anybody watching this, if she talked to you that way, I would love to see what your reaction would be. If the exchange went down as it is presented and what you're about to see in this article, Lee was stupid enough to put this out here. Okay? All right? It takes men to get business. No, it's not at that. No, this is where I, hold on a second. Let's not get crazy here, all right? This is not a man thing. There are plenty of women who can do this. My great, 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 dear friend slash Beth Schnitzer, <laughs> okay? Could get this done in a second. She's one of the first female sports marketers, started her own company called Skate Nation, worked for many years as the marketing and PR representative for Pier 39. She would never, ever, ever act the way Lee does. In fact, would be a better representation for the city of Oakland than Lee in that capacity representing sports. Heck, or me, since I was smart enough when I met Beth in 2000 at the Lee Steinberg Super Bowl party in Atlanta to invite her on to the Oakland Alameda County Sports Commission as head of our marketing and chairperson of our marketing committee for the Super Bowl bid, okay? No, it's not because she's a woman. Sir Chai, please don't do that. I'm begging you not to do that. Okay, it's not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, um, it. Women, I'm gonna write here. Women can do it too. Okay. Highlight here. All right. Women can do it too. It's not a. It's not a male female thing. All right. And the reason why I say it isn't to double down on it is that. You got guys out there that are cheering Lee on online. You know the ones that say sell the team when you and I both know it to be stupid for John to sell it at this point when he's staring at a potential four billion dollar valuation in Las Vegas. Forget it. Sell the what? Give me a break. I mean, that's when the whole thing went off the rails to begin with in terms of logic with me. Hey, if the, it had stayed in Oakland, I would have bought that in a second. But you don't tell the owner of a major league baseball organization or football organization or professional organization to sell their team when they're moving to build a venue to increase their value and they're 
closer and closer to that objective every day. And you have done nothing for them in Oakland. All right? How stupid is that? So it becomes a psychological group thing that then becomes an article in the American Psychiatric Association magazine. I'm not kidding. Around how fake news is generated. We have all these people that want to take their latest behavior and bring it to the tribe and say, look what I did. Look what I did. Aren't I great? No, you're not great at all. You're just spreading fake news. You just maintain a behavior that on its face is nonsensical. But in our society today, rather than people actually you know, stopping to say, hey, you know, that doesn't make any sense, they're too busy. They just don't get involved. This so it becomes a little handful of you that the media, media, loving any kind of controversy, tries to make it look bigger. But what the media has gotten in itself into is what I call the Stupidville Corner. The Stupidville, cor the Stupidville Corner happens when you take on a movement and you don't think about what that movement is really about. And then you don't think about when the movement will die out or why it would die out. And then you don't consider, hey, look, will I wind up being in the position of pushing something that nobody eventually cares about? And so I lose viewership. And then maybe some one of those people gets indicted or something negative happens and suddenly that washes over on you which could happen, all right? Because this is the behavior of some of these folks, okay? We're not talking about gentlemen here, but we are talking about men. And so that's why I'm saying, so Chai, this is not a man's thing. This is a thing for seasoned professionals who understand the business, sports, and events. That's what this is about, okay? That's what this is about. Women can do it too, all right? Okay? All right? Women can do it too, okay? So he then goes on to say she could resign and save her honor. It would be a good thing. Uh, Bennett says, what's left to sell regarding Oakland? And this is me. Remember, women can do it too. Timothy Ryan asks, when will Oakland learn their lesson? It, the, the better question is, when will Oakland rise up and make a regime change? Right now, the group that is putting together the recall campaign is over the 50% mark in terms of signatures. I would not be surprised if there was an uptick in, in, in such activity particularly as this, as with the A's decision last week and the subsequent fact that they're already successful and then this revelation today, all right? So and it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Now let's take a look at the centerpiece of Meyer. Let, let's look at this, that is in the meetings, okay? And say, rather, longer, I'm going to have to reduce it in size. Zoom out there. I think that, that's that's good enough, all right? Because that's, that's a perfect balance. And it, I'm going to go, so I'm going to skip past the Fisher part. And I'm going to get to the meat. Okay. And it goes on to the meeting, which happened here. The view from the waterfront offices, and I'm reading this, okay, of the A's in Oakland's Jack London Square are magnificent. Ferries coming in and out, light shimmering off the bay, San Francisco skyline nearly close enough to reach out and touch. The site of the team's abandoned Howard Terminal project is just a slight lean to the north. In a conference room situated to maximize the view, representatives from the team 
and the city of Oakland met at 8.30 a.m. on April 2nd, precisely 49 and a half hours before the festivities in West Sacramento to discuss a leash extension at the Oakland Coliseum and settle once and for all the team's fate in the city. It was an upset of sorts that meetings with Oakland happened in the first place. After the A's pulled out of a $12 billion project to build a ballpark at Howard Terminal, an undoable park retail office deal, that's actually not true. In fact, let me go here and clean this up, all right? First of all, there is a popular but 1,000% incorrect idea that the $12 billion of office and retail and residential was to be all built at once. That's wrong. And then in their rush to paint John Fisher a certain way, and I mean they, Shang Tao, Rebecca Kaplan, whose idea it may very well have been, it wouldn't surprise me, uh, and others started saying that the A's wanted to build this whole complex at once when in point of fact, it was phased. Ballpark first, uh, the first phase of, I believe, 500,000 square feet second with the event center and so on. It ultimately building up to roughly seven point, excuse me, roughly six million square feet of space at the end of the day, somewhere in there, actually a little less, but phased over primarily a 14 year period, a long time. All right. So to say that it was to be built out at once is wrong because then would say, people would say, well, where are you going to get 12 billion and you know, all of that. And the idea was for, and Dave Cowell and, and I've talked about this on, in our interviews for the ACE to have different developers come in and build different buildings on the different parcels available at Howard terminal that would then create the Howard terminal, if you will, city within a city. That was the idea, okay? The A's would be master developer, but they wanted developer partners. The city did nothing. You hear me? And Dave and I talked about this. This is on camera. We talked about this. Look at me. The city did nothing to come up with any developer. Didn't put out a request for proposals. Didn't assist the athletics in any way because they had no idea what they were doing. That's why I beg Libby to hire me as a consultant. And that's why I say to you all, and some of you all don't like it, that if I were in charge, none of this would have happened and the A's would still be, even with the gambling advantage in advance, and not Las Vegas, which I had an answer to, by the way, would still be in Oakland. But it pisses me off when you get somebody involved who doesn't know what they're doing and you put them in charge like Lee Hansen and Molly Mayburn. All right. Okay. And again, I stress this. There are millions of women around the world talented enough to do this work and would not make these mistakes. But you have some people who believe that they'll put any woman in charge just to make a statement. And that's got to stop. It's an insult to the millions of women who bothered to get an education and develop an economics, who bothered to get their law degree, who bothered to get any experience building something in sports, who like Diane Pauway rose to be one of the top investment bankers in the entire world and the first one to do a private placement financing for the St. Louis Cardinals in 1992. And that is who I got to bear on the matter of building a stadium for the Raiders in Oakland, Mary Libby Shaft, my god sister, I gave her the contact information for Diane and everything else after Diane and I had a 45 minute conversation, cold call, I called her, cold called her, okay? And didn't even follow up. You asked Libby to this day, why? You understand me? Ask her why, okay? Yeah, I will put, someone says I have an ax to grind. You're damn right I have an ax to grind. 
I have a right to have an axe to grind. I see crap like this going on. I'm going to grind my axe. I don't care how much you don't like it. This is ridiculous. Someone's got to say something. All right. So let me continue here. All right. If Del Fuente and Mayor both Raiders, and I think so. Absolutely. Now, he, he writes, after the A's pull out of the project, the mayor's office, now I'm reading here, last April, the mayor's office sat back and waited to see if the team was interested in extending its lease. Well, they didn't ask them. See, this is another thing. This is more because Lee Hansen decided to basically throw up what she thought she knew. She never considered that people watching this would actually be those who know. You don't wait for a team. This is economic development 101. When you're doing business ret retention, you call. Remember how I called, cold called? I cold called Diane Paulway at Piper Jaffrey Investment Bankers. You call. You make the call. You don't wait for them to move to do anything. You don't say, well, I'm just kind of sitting back and waiting. But that's what this is written here. Like they're fat cats in the office. Like, We're just waiting around. And, oh, you got nothing better to do than to smoke weed and go to drink over at Sean and Rich's bar and 510 floor and all that. Give me a break. You're doing this on taxpayer dime, you know, right? Okay. You're doing this on taxpayer dollar. Dime is a dollar. All right. Spurned and exhausted, it right, Tim writes. Spurned and exhausted by what it perceived as the disingenuousness of the A's negotiating stance. The city was in no mood to make the first overture. Oh, you poor baby. This is what is written here. I was spurned. I was exhausted. Oh, my, my feelings are always so upset. And this laid out writ large for all to see is what people talk about when they talk about the pettiness of the Shang Talent administration as mayor of Oakland. You're seeing it here, folks, right before your eyes. Unvarnished, without filter, on ESPN. All right? I'm just the messenger. Hey, do I have to do anything? It literally writes itself. <laughs> okay? I will read this again. Spurned and exhausted by what it perceived as the disingenuousness of the A's negotiating stance. The city was in no mood to make the first overture, so we'll just sit back, as they said, sat back and waited. Rather than, you know what? I'm going to take my feelings out of this. This is a professional matter. I'm going to call... I'm going to make I'm going to call, okay? Hey, Bleacher David is not good for Miss Hansen. You gotta be an idiot to make a comment like that. Buddy. All right. Straight up. Okay? Straight up. That's idiotic stuff. Look, I'm glad you're not involved in it. I've done this sort of thing. You haven't. I'm glad you're not involved. Okay? Yeah, this is me with know it all stance. I don't care. I'm sick of this. I've lived this for 37 years, Dave. It's gone downhill. I'm tired of it. I'm not putting up with this crap. Period. Love you. Okay? Love you. But I will not, I will not allow such comments to go without counter. Lee Hansen fucked up. Now, you got business with them too, right? Okay? You got business with them. You know it. Okay? You and I both know you got business with them. So be honest. You got business with them, okay? That's not cool, man. Love you, but let's be honest about it, okay? I'm talking about Bleacher Dave who says, good for Miss Hanson. Give me a break. And then there's no good business with bad men. They're not bad men. They're just people like yourself who have these ideas about people in sports that have nothing to do with reality because you never work with them. I'm going on. This is Zenny 62 Media. Let me tell you something, Dave. Today is Zenny 62 Media's 20 year, 20th year, 20th year 
as credential press at the NFL draft. The NFL let me build my business within that. The same kind of people you think aren't good. All right? Have given me access worth a ton of money. Over 20 years. Not affiliated with any other media organization. My brand. You hear what I'm saying? And I'm black. All right? Think about it. Okay? So don't give me this pap. Okay? All right? And Dave Cobble is not a ball face liar either. You don't know what you're talking about. I happen to be the guy that caused the whole tax increment financing matter anyway. He's not a liar at all. At all. Okay? What he is, and this is a bit of a criticism, is a person who doesn't always see the tight details of a particular situation. And so it's prone to make mistakes in that area. All right? In that area. And he does. Does he not follow up on occasion? Yes, he doesn't follow up. But is he a good person? Yes, he is a good person. I know that personally. All right? I have no problem pointing out my friend's positives and negatives, just like I did with you, my friend. Okay? Because we all know each other. And the way Oakland used to operate before the internet and before social media, if we had a difference, we picked up the phone and we did what we called. It was better that way. So here you have, in print, you see folks, you, I told you there are folks like around. You see, Dave is one of those folks. You see what I'm talking about? Sir Chai, this is a dude. He would get in the same meeting act the same way. He just admitted that. I'd fire Dave too. And he's my friend. I'd say, dude, you can't be here. Uh-uh. You're screwing up. Beep. Out. Sorry. Bye. Uh-uh. I'll buy you a dinner later. Okay? I'll pay you for your time. Love you. But no, we had a deal to do. We we're supposed to consummate the deal. You know that as well as I do, man. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay? Black man to black man, that's wrong. Okay? Straight up. And it's another example of how the Tao administration divides black people. Okay? First time ever in Oakland. Ever. Okay? All right? Now, Dave says he looked right in my face. Um, and missed you, everyone else in the CBA negotiations. Well, if you looked in your face, why don't you say hi to him, Dave? I'm not giving you any truck. Have some, have enough confidence to befriend people instead of being. See, a lot of you, a lot of the the folks that uh, uh, that think like you do in Oakland, you've never been in these areas before. Okay, all right. No, you guys didn't consummate the deal either. You got in there and your first thought was he's a billionaire and he's a this and he's a that. The city was incompetent. And you know what? In our conversations, you've admitted that. So shame on you for coming on here and telling only one side of what you said to me because I know the rest. And I have you on other programs admitting that. So come on, dude. Remember when we were talking about the police chief issue? You said some things there are still on my channel. I could pull them up right now. So I'm saying just be real, man. Don't cover for your people because you got some financial representation with them. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. But with me, I tell the truth. Even if I have a relationship, both business and personal, if somebody has done something that they shouldn't have done, or if I've done something I shouldn't have done, I will tell you. Okay, I will tell you. All right? I will tell you. Stop trying to put up the mirrors, Dave. They don't work here. All right? The mirrors don't work here. Let me continue. Not on my program. Love you. Not on my program. Let me continue.
So, all right. We got by early February, right here. Here's what I'm reading. With no movement from the city, the A's, the, from, by early February, with no movement from the A's, the city's representatives assume the team have found somewhere else to play. The Major League Baseball scheduling deadline for 2025 loomed, and Commissioner Rob Manfred had decreed only that the A's would play somewhere in the West. A's President Dave Cavill floated possibilities with varying levels of feasibility. Oakland, Sacramento, Salt Lake City, the, AAA, the A's AAA Stadium in Las Vegas, Oracle Park in San Francisco. The city went forward with leases for the Oakland Roots and Seoul, which is another problem, okay? But we're screwing up. So, you, so hey, Dave, are you going to call the Roots and the Soul liars too? All right. Same dynamic, man. People involved who have no clue what they're doing. All right. All points back to Oakland government, Dave. What you got to say? What you got to say? Anyway, the city went forward with leases for the Oakland Roots and Soul, as I'm reading here, the men's and women's professional soccer teams in the United States Soccer League. And then in mid-February, the team reached out to Oakland. Note, the team reached out to Oakland. In a move that echoed the clumsy parallel paths approach, Cavill announced when the team pitted Las Vegas against Oakland. Now, this is slanted toward the city of Oakland anyway because the city gave him access. The A's didn't. That's how this is. That's what you're looking at here. You're looking at a guy in Team Keown who wasn't given access by the athletics. So he's using his own article to take it out on the athletics by putting the city's own words out there. But the city is st stupid enough to go along with it. You hear that? Stupid enough to go along with it, all right? And then in February, the team reached out to Oakland in a move that echoed the clumsy parallel paths approach Cobble announced when the team pitted Las Vegas against Oakland, which is also wrong, which means Tim himself wasn't paying attention because it was Major League Baseball that did it. As Dave Cobble said to me in our interview, all right? As Dave Cobble said to me in our interview, all right, back in 2020, Major League Baseball came up with that. And why did Major League Baseball come with that, up with it? Two words, folks. What God en France. In other words, look at my face in French. Sports gambling. You hear that? You hear that? Sports gambling, something that's illegal in California. But it's legal in 38 states. Of the 12 states, California is one of them. Georgia soon to join the other 38, leaving 39. Where will California be? Out in the cold, losing sports franchises left and right. It wouldn't surprise me if the Warriors moved to Las Vegas. Yeah, you heard me say that. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Because Joe Lacob and Mark Bedane are friends and they've got some business out there they're working on in Las Vegas Valley. Maybe the expansion team or, but the Bay Area deserves it because we're always smug about what we think we have. Oh, everybody wants to be here. Yeah, it's beautiful. It doesn't mean the government has a right to screw up. And yet that's what happens all the time, folks. I've lived it. I know it better than anybody. I know it better than Dave. Okay. Period. All right. Period. Okay. So back here, this is fun stuff. Approaching us halfway through February indicated to us it wasn't super serious. Oakland Chief of Staff Lee Hansen said, not super serious. Okay. That's not the point here. Here's another error. As an economic development, trained economic development expert, I will tell you this. You never go in to anything thinking that a business is not super serious. You, It's your job. Listen to me. Look at me, okay? It's your job to make them serious. It is your job to sell them. You understand? That is what your job is to do. It is your job to sell them. If you're not selling them, you're not doing the job, you don't belong in the office, you get your tail out of the office and make some room for somebody who can do it. You understand? 
That's your job, Lee Hansen. That's your job. Okay? If you haven't done it, don't even try to do it. You screw up all the time. Get out of the kitchen and let the men cook. Yeah, and this is what I'm saying. Let the men cook as opposed to the women, right? Um, all right? Men can cook too. All right? Now I'm being jocular here. But my point is this. You have to be aggressive. You have to have an almost fanatical desire to make something work for your city. To figure it out. To make it, to make it happen. Because if you're not doing that, you're not working. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about before I get back to T. Keon. When I was working to bring the Subo to Oakland, we lost to Jacksonville. From the first weeks after I was named the point person, I was a fellow who worked for Public Works in Oakland. Didn't know who he was. He knew me. Of course, I was on television. I'm off to the office. He says, you're never going to bring the Subo to Oakland. This went on for about three or four weeks. On the fifth week, Fifth week, I went Bobcat Goldthwait on him. Now, if you don't know who Bobcat Goldthwait is, he's a famous comedian who would say, say it, say it, say it, say it, say it. Yeah, that's the look I gave him. I went John Gruden on him. Say it, Super Bowl, and what, what, what? Yeah, I made him say it. I made him say it. Everybody thought I was going nuts because I was. You have somebody taking the Oakland taxpayer money in him, telling me that my city is going to fail at something and he's getting money from the taxpayers to work for Oakland and serve Oakland and them. No, no, as, as, uh, -uh. no, 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 no. As a Kimbe Mutombo would say, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, not on my watch, pal. He ain't getting away with that. No, you dance to my tune. And that's what I'm talking about. You did it to arrogant. You don't all right it to arrogant. You got a problem with it. So what? It's called getting the job done. You can't get the job done. Get out. There are plenty of people, men and women who can. Lee Hansen, you wasted our time. You screwed up. Back to the point. All right. Now. Approaching us halfway through February, indicating it wasn't super serious, she says. A normal negotiation would have started two months after they pulled out last April, so so much trust had deteriorated. But we thought, this is Lee, that we'd given them the benefit of the doubt and realized the organization was going through a lot of the tra of transition. We felt it was our responsibility to the fans and the city to go forward and try to make it work on our terms. And here, okay, this is where she says, try to make it work on our terms. No, try to make it work. And that's what seasoned economic development officers understand. The job is to produce a win-win, not a win for us, but a win-win, both for the tenant, the A's, and for the city and the Coliseum. See, Lee completely forgot about the Coliseum. Why? She's chief of staff, and she has had no experience in this sort of thing. And yet, Shang, who also has no experience in this, let her do it. Crazy idea. Woohoo! Crazy idea. Okay. Then it goes on to read by April 2nd, the city was on its fourth meeting with the A's, though little progress had been made. In one, in this one, referring to the fourth meeting, April 2nd, as was the case in each of the previous three, Dave Cobble sat at the head of the table. Hansen sat to his left directly across from A's Chief of Staff, Miguel Duarte. Miguel, good dude. Oakland Councilman Rebecca Kaplan, another great person, even though I disagree with a lot of things that my friend does, but she's my friend, okay? And that's the way I rolled, like my day is my friend. We're all family, even though I think my family screws up a lot. But at any rate, Oakland Councilman Rebecca Kaplan sat to Hans's left with Alameda County Supervisor Dave Halbert, another great dude, and Oakland Policy Chief Zach Goldman across from her. Why Zach was in that meeting, I have no idea. Let me continue. Cobble spoke first, as had become his custom, and expressed surprise that the city's lease terms had been reported by ESPN two days before the meeting. Those terms, as outlined on sheets passed around the room on this morning, include a five-year 
lease with a team opt out after three, a $97 million extension. Oh, by the way, I want to add something. This news where Dave had expressed surprise, I actually first broke that story. If you remember my live stream earlier about what had happened in the meeting before Tim's article came out. All right. I was told by one of those folks that was in the meeting, I won't mention who, who that Dave had said they first found out about the 97 million through the press. So there you go. All right. Those terms as outlined on sheets passed around the room this morning include, included a five-year lease with a team opt out after three, a $97 million extension fee, and an agreement for the ACE to pay for the field conversion when the roots and soul begin pay, playing at the Coliseum next year, or in the Coliseum next year. The city also wanted the A's to help secure assurances from Major League Baseball that the city receive a one-year window to solicit ownership groups for a future expansion franchise, which is, this is, you know, this is stupid right here. Pay attention. Pay attention, kids. This is stupid. All right, the city, as they see the city, wanted the A's help to secure assurances for Major League Baseball, the city will receive a one-year window to solicit ownership groups for future expansion franchise. Folks, you don't need their help. You understand? You don't need their help. I got Magic Johnson. You know, I got, I'll tell you something. You know, I got Magic Johnson and Frank Robinson to even consider buying the A's before Magic dropped out. I cold called because I love cold calling. And I'm going to tell you something that really pisses me off about this whole thing. When you represent the mayor of any city, the world is your oyster. You can call the king of Siam and get somewhere. You could even call Vladimir Putin and get somewhere. You can call Name it. Name the person. Because you have the title of representing the mayor of Oakland. You're the economic advisor in my case. So I cold called Michael Ovitz. And you would say, who's Michael Ovitz? Michael Ovitz at one point was the most powerful agent in Hollywood. The man who gave rise to such luminaries as Tom Cruise, along with working with great people like Robert Evans. Remember, kid stays in the picture. I had the pleasure of meeting Robert Evans, Evans, by the way, great guy. Miss him a lot. Robert, Ev Robert Evans is one heck of a person, okay? Warts and all, a whole nother story, whole nother story, all right? But I cold called Michael Ovitz. And I told him what I was trying to do because I know that oh, Mike was involved in producing the competing bid to build or reestablish the Los Angeles NFL franchise, okay? So he put me in touch with Lon Rosen, who was then the manager for Magic Johnson. I called Lon Rosen, and Ron, Lon and I talked for a good, eh, a good, a good while. All right, this was 1990, 1997. 1996 going to 97 because we had a series of conversations. But we talked a good while. And then I t called John Cariotis, San Jose land and residential developer, to update him. And then John Cariotis said, Zinni, all I have are these spreadsheets regarding the athletics. He wanted to see how the athletics would perform in the future after they purchased it, the, the organization under a refurbished stadium. So I built a system dynamics model. And then I, having the past A's revenue and expense information, I backcasted it to 1968 and it worked to 85% accuracy. A system dynamics model. Now, if you don't know what a system dynamics model is, you will not grasp the full definition of what I just told you and what it means, but I did it. John looked, he goes, this is amazing, this is great. So that was my ticket, having enough competence 
to understand how these organizations work enough to model them, to present them to a land developer so that they can make the proper decisions. Okay? Lee Hansen, can you do that? No, you can't. No. All right? I've done it many times. Okay? Get a problem with somebody black that can do that? Even if you're black, too? Shame on you. Okay? It's about getting the job done. And I don't take prisoners. Just so you know. I don't take prisoners. So. It says, taken effectively, it was a big task. Broken down individually, the extension fee was clearly the biggest obstacle for, obstacle for the team. With the A's, money always is. Cowell said 97 million payable whether the team stayed for five years or opted out at three was a non-starter and wondered how the city had come up with that number. He, to he was told that Mayor Shang Tao's team had done its research and the number factored in the cost the team would incur by relocating twice in the next three to five years, the $67 million annually the team receives from NBC Sports for its television rights for being in the Bay Area, a figure the city says that includes just $10 million in ad revenue, meaning NBC Sports subsidizes to the tune of $57 million per year, and the sweetheart $1.5 million rent the team currently pays the Coliseum. But let me, let me explain, okay? Here's what is completely ridiculous about that, okay? Here's what's really stupid about it, okay? What's really stupid about it is that you're basically saying, okay, I know you can bear a $97 million cost, so on top of the $97 million cost that you're going to bear, we're going to put it on you anyway. Huh? That's got nothing to do with the Coliseum, okay? What is standard normal? Standard normal, folks, is this. Coliseum has the A's as a tenant. They're paying $1.5 million. The Coliseum has a surplus. What kind of capital expenditures do you need to make in the future that involve the athletics that would help make the facility better for them during the time that they're in Oakland, right? You calculate that out. You include that in the rent. So now you're looking at one point, I would say $1.8 million, somewhere in there. Maybe two. Maybe you can push them to two. If you make some wiggle, some adjustments and say, hey, look, we'll throw in a premium for, or we'll throw in for every dollar that you contribute in terms of subsidy to in stadium businesses, concession business, we'll reduce your rent owed by that much. You see what I'm getting? That's a real negotiation. That's a real win-win. It helps the businesses there that are struggling because the city does not have a business retention program for small businesses. Dave. Dave. Okay. Give me a break with this stuff. All right. All right. Let's continue. A figure. I'm reading here now. The city says that includes just $10 million in ad revenue, meaning NBC Sports subsidizes to the tune of $57 million per year and the sweetheart $1.5 million in rent. The team currently pays the Coliseum. Here's where it gets weird. Dave says, this is above market rent, Dave Cobble said. And Hansen agreed. It is. It is, she said. And your deal now is criminally below market. <laughs> the city receives no parking revenue from the Coliseum. Think about it. Now I want you to listen to what Lee is saying here and what she's allowed herself to be recorded as saying by ESPN in the form of Tim Keown. The city receives no parking revenue from the Coliseum, no cut of food and beverage sales, only a small share of ticket revenue. The extension fee, Hanson emphasized, was not to be misconstrued as rent. It was simply the cost of staying in Oakland. What? So in other words, she's like the godfather. She's going to shake you down. Well, it's, it's like, you know, well, you know, it's, 
it's just the cost of doing business. You know what I mean? I'm the godfather, yeah, right? Give me a break. Seriously? It's exchanges like that that are the reason we have anti-corruption laws in California. Okay? All right? You don't ever let words like the one Lee uttered come out of your mouth when you're representing the city of Oakland. You should get fired. The Ethics Commission should step in. Oh, and by the way, Shantel administration, will you please restore the Ethics Commission's budget and also that of the auditor's office, which is working at one half the full number of FTEs it needs to do its job, including evaluating you. People talk to me. Okay? I like where I sit. The city receives no parking letter with the Coliseum, Lee says. So you're not thinking of the Coliseum at all. She's acting like the A's are beholding first to the city of Oakland and not the Coliseum. Oh, the heck with the Coliseum. She doesn't care. She says the city received no parking revenue from the Coliseum. She writes this. No cut of the food and beverage sales. She, she, she writes, she says this, okay? She says this. She forgets about, hey, sales tax. All right? Okay? She forgets all that stuff. Only a small share of ticket revenue. The extension fee, Hansen emphasized, was not to be misconstrued as rent. It was simply the cost of staying in Oakland. But then also, she talks about all these revenues the city doesn't get, but she's not thinking about the Coliseum and what it takes to run it first. First. The city's job is to make absolutely certain that development occurs at and around the Coliseum that then is translated to the city in the form of sales taxes, penalty fees, and other types of expenditures that government that wind up as revenue to the government, including something called unsecured property. All right, leases or money is from leases. There's a number of places where the government can make money, does, but when you don't know what you're doing, doesn't. In this instance, we have a lot of people in the city of Oakland who don't know what they're doing, and they don't bother to ask people who are the older than them, who've been there, who modeled it out. They think that they know, and then they get upset with a guy like me who does know, who's telling them they don't know what they're doing, because you know. And yeah, I'm arrogant. So what? All right. The city receives no parking lever in the Coliseum, she says. No cut of the food and beverage sales. Only a small share of the ticket revenue. The extension fee Hansen emphasized was not to be misconstrued as rent. It was simply the cost of staying in Oakland. The goal, she said, is not to make this the cheapest deal possible. The goal is to make this work for the city. Well, Dave Cobble said, this isn't going to work for us. Hansen said, she shrugged. And then she says, it's your responsibility to decide where you're going to play baseball, she says. We pick up the trash and we do cops and we care about economic development, but it's not our responsibility to house you. Who says that? I will repeat this. This is Lee Hansen, our chief of staff, saying it's your responsibility, saying this to Dave, the president of the athletics in his office. It's your responsibility to decide where you're going to play baseball. We pick up the trash and we do cops and we care about economic development, but it's not our responsibility to house you. I want you to take Lee's words. I want you to mouth them off to yourself and think, is there any kind of way that you can make that sound nice? The answer is simply no. Okay. But think of it this way. If someone talked to you the way Lee did, how would you react? It's not our responsibility to house you. Excuse me? Okay, here's how stupid that is. Regano Foss, look at me, look at me, look at me. 
Look at me, Lee. Look at me. It is your responsibility to house them, Lee. Do you want to know why? Because the city and the county own the Coliseum. That's why. So you're wrong. And you need to apologize for the athletics out the door. Your behavior was absolutely childish. It is your responsibility to house them. It is your responsibility to house them, Lee. That's our facility. We own it. What are you talking about? And from the looks of this, Dave, as per usual, his gentlemanly stance, said nothing to you. I happen to know what he said to other people. I'm not going to get to that. Okay? No one likes being talked to like that. Did it ever occur to you, Lee, that maybe that's the reason they decided they didn't want to play ball with you all? That that escape hatch they fashioned for themselves called Las Vegas was looking better and better by the day. And hey, maybe Sacramento was looking pretty doggone good too. Ever occur to you? Did it ever occur to any one of you who applaud her behavior? Are you stupid? What's wrong with you? All right? Let me get the comments here, all right? Okay? All right? Let's see here. He says, Lease is the county is still dragging its feet on. Whatever. Dave Cobble, Timothy Ryan says, Dave Cobble says baseball should be fun even though his team has been anything but. Okay, so what's your point? Uh, the Bleacher Dave says, Lake up going to walk away from his billion-dollar investment in Chase Center? Really? Yeah, really. For another billion-dollar investment. I didn't say you'd walk away from it, Dave. You don't walk away from one. Stan Kroenke owns, excuse me, five, six, eight different sports franchises. You don't walk away from one to get in the other. But Dave, see, you don't know about these things. I know these folks. You don't. Okay? So you can ha-ha-ha all you want to. I can say this. Ha-ha-hell. Pal. <laughs> Give me a break. Dave, you haven't been in the room. I have. Okay? And I know you have a hard time with that. I don't care. You're my friend. But I'm letting you know. Uh-uh. Remember, value black men. You're black. You don't like I know you don't like it when people treat you that way. Okay? Pot calling the kettle black. Just saying. You know what I'm talking about. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right? So Chai says, not sure if women can do it. Especially, oh, come on, get off it, man. Get off it, okay? Get off it. A's wind up at Sacramento. Watch the Roots and Soul and Ballers not play at California, okay? So, Chai, I don't like your stance on women. I'm going to tell you that. You got to turn it around, all right? I think the best way to have you and others change your view is to have women on my show who've done this stuff. Because you haven't seen that. I mean, I've had Dave on, right? I've had I had Hill Carroll on, who's a sports marketer in North Carolina a few years ago. But plenty of women that I know will come on and talk. I'm going to get them. Because you all need a education on how many bright, incompetent and accomplished women in sports business there really are. Because it's quite obvious you have no clue. And I have every clue. When I started my first company, Sports Business Simulations, of the nine contractors, eight were women. I've said this before, including Kristen Herrera, who was our executive vice president. I'm very proud of my track record, okay? I was raised by a smart, and t beautiful single mother who did 
an outstanding job in life and has done an outstanding job in life. She's like 89. Going up with my mother taught me how to appreciate women like the one I'm talking about. Okay? So don't make those comments about women, Sir Chai. It's wrong. It's insulting. And, you know, you put your little $2 in, I say a little. I appreciate it, right? But if you're going to have that kind of sense, I can do without it. I don't care if it's $200. That's wrong. I don't like sexism. I don't like racism. Okay? I'm not putting up with either one. All right. So all local elected officials will resign or be called, recalled. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Casey, he means Casey Pratt, my friend, who I disagree with on this because, you know, Casey's organization, ABC and Larry Beal, they're using you all. Okay. Okay. They, okay, they've got you in their back pockets and they know it. All right. But you're using you all, just getting used. I'm talking about you Ace fans, they're, getting, they're using you. All right. It's unbelievable. They bought Dave Cobble in there, well, actually at his office, just to spit in his face. And they call this a negotiation. Yeah, exactly. It embarrassing. It really is. Flip Jack Hayes says, and the so called A's fans still blame Fisher on why the team is leaving Oakland. Fitting, you know? Let me continue here. All right. I mean, it really hurts, doesn't it? It hurts. It hurts. I'm sorry, Dave had to deal with this. So, again, well, Dave Cowell said, this isn't going to work for us. Hansen said she shrugged. Hansen said she loves it. I love, I love the bright lights. I like to boogie. Just call me Lee Hansen. Okay, fine. Hansen said she shrugged. It's your responsibility to decide where you're going to play baseball, she said. We pick up trash and we do cops and we care about economic development, but it's not our responsibility to house you. Then Tim Keown writes, this is perhaps the clearest sign yet that Oakland's patients would have worn paper thin. Give me a break, Tim. No commentary about how stupid this thing was, what you said? Well, of course, what I expect? Hey, Tim's mad the athletics didn't talk to him either. But anyway, he writes, this was perhaps the clearest sign yet that Oakland's patients had worn thin, paper thin, and that the team would have to agree to city-friendly terms or find another place to play. Although the current administration has been, had been in office just 15 months, the cumulative weight of the past 20 years, oh, give me a break, of uncertainty, fell on its shoulders. The benefits of staying in Oakland were self-evident. No relocation costs, no need to uproot employees, that television contract available only in the nation's 10th largest media market is ranked by Nielsen. And despite its many faults, some of them inflicted, self-inflicted by the A's, the Coliseum remains a big league stadium. But Tim, all right, all right? And then he goes on to write, and this is where I'm going to get after Tim in a second, because Tim made some intellectual blunders here. Though the city didn't present financial terms until the fourth meeting, the basic parameters, a five-year lease with a team opt-out were on the table. Sources say the A's, however, never laid out an offer sheet, never presented so much as a single piece of paper with demands or suggestions. Well, but then, see, Tim writes that, right? But then he puts this in. At one point during the second meeting in March, Cobble suggested the A's might be willing to accept the Raiders deal. Two years and 17 million. The arrangement Raiders owner Mark Davis struck for the two lame duck years in Oakland before he moved his team to Las Vegas. Now that's a deal. So Tim, why are you writing this stuff, man? And then Tim goes on to quote Lee, who says, first of all, Lee Hansen says, please don't call out the Raiders deal. That brings back bad memories for everyone in this town. And second, that's not going to work. All right. And let me explain this because neither Lee nor Dave know much about that. But then Tim writes, the Raiders deal was the only negotiation tactic Cobble employed, according to sources familiar with the negotiations. There was still some vigorous back and forth, though. Cobble took exception to the city's offer of a five-year lease since the team believes its future Vegas ballpark, start date unclear, financing undetermined, not true. 
on the nine acre site of the yet to be demolished Tropicana uh, Casino Resort will be ready for the 2028 season, maybe a year earlier. Yep, maybe a year earlier. All right. So, all right. And then she says Hansen worked at City, the city had worked its own numbers there too. And those numbers indicate the city would need five years minimum before the Vadia Stadium is completed. Left unspoken, sources say, is that significant doubt remains whether the deal in Vegas will happen at all, which is stupid. And the five-year gambit was a hedge against ever having to negotiate with the A's again. That's stupid. I mean, you can always just renegotiate. You just have a, a clause that says, hey, at year three, we'll revisit things. Just so you, this all lays out just how stupid the mayor's office has handled this, okay? All right? Okay? Okay? All right? All right? And so let me get to something that Tim wrote that really bothers me. All right. This deal, two years and 17 million, was the work of Scott McKibben. Scott McKibben was the executive director of the Okanagan County Joint Coliseum Joint Powers Authority. Scott, who I first met when he was publisher of the Tribune and also helped sponsor our Super Bowl bid, later became president of the Rose Bowl and then president of the A11 football conference and then called me because he was interested in running the Coliseum and was at one point the second runner up, but someone back there, I'm not going to get into names, was playing a game because they wanted a guy named Ken, a guy Houston. They wanted a guy named Guy Houston, who at one point was a California assemblyman to be the executive director. Guy was a friend of Scott Haggerty's and a real estate consultant. But I got wind from someone out there who was involved with the JPA that they were taking Scott's salary figures and desires and sharing them with Houston, who would then underbid Scott. The person who was number one on the list was the Steelers financial C C or CFO, Mark, uh, I forgot Mark's last name. He was number one on the list, all right? So I blogged about the whole thing. And then I threw in this because I found I discovered that Guy Houston had been the focus of a court case that didn't go his way. He was appropriately punished, fined, for defrauding an elderly group of $33,000. And that put the kibosh on hiring him and opened the door for Scott McKibben to be the rightful executive director of the Coliseum. And Scott did a more than credible job because Scott had the best relationship with the sports team executives, in particular Mark Davis, of any executive director in Coliseum history. And they punished him for it. They the board. They asked Scott to go after the Ring Central Naming Rights Agreement go after a naming rights agreement means, hey, you do it, and then you get you know, your win fee. They didn't lay out the terms, but they didn't tell him what not to do. They also did not put Scott through, and this is something I have said to Rebecca Kaplan as chair, the Joint Powers Authority, a training exercise for everybody that comes in, like for example, John Beam, who's our newest board member, who was at one point coach of Skyline High Football, take them through a Section 1090 course. What is Section 1090? Section 1090 is the anti-corruption, anti-double-dealing clause law of the state of California that specifically applies to contractors. But you should be told about it if you're coming from the private sector and into the public sector, you're not going to know these laws exist. 
That's what they did with Scott. So Scott thought, hey, maybe I should get this extra fee. What Scott wrongly did was he went to Ring Central and asked about it. Ring Central, not knowing what's going on, told the other Coliseum folks, the board, which means that they told them with their political channel, which means they're trying to sandbag Scott. Rather than saying to Scott, hey, you know what? Are we really supposed to be paying this to you? Okay? So it went to Larry Reed and the other board members, in particular those board members, those same board members who were asking Scott McKibben for tickets to big ticket events like the NBA Finals. Hear me? This is before we start. This is all what led to this new rule regarding tickets and who gets tickets. It's a big mess. All right? But they were using Scott to get that kind of those kind of freebies. All right? And so instead of working out something behind the scenes, they tried to make Scott look like a criminal because he's a white Republican male. I'm not Republican. I'm not white. I am definitely male. But Scott's my friend. I have friends of all different stripes. The one thing that all my friends have is they're exceptionally competent in what they do, particularly with respect to sports and urban planning and development. Like, for example, Dave Malmuth, Malmuth who's the developer of the Oscars, who had on my show, hadn't seen him in many, many years. Just before the a week before the Oscars, talking about developing what was called Hollywood Highland, now it's called Ovation. I know some very accomplished people. I'm proud of it. You don't treat my friends like crap. Especially when you yourself have no business sitting in those chairs. That's how I roll. Okay? You don't do that. And that's why I will forever be angry what they did to Scott. That was wrong. All they had to do was handle it back channel. All right? That's all they had to do. Say, you know, you, we made a mistake. We're going to overlook it this time. You're not going to get a fee or anything. We love what you did, but please don't do that again. And by the way, your punish will, will be you have to take this course. You have to sit down with city staff, and they're going to walk you through the laws regarding double dipping and corruption and everything else. Because even though that's not what you intended and you didn't get what you were seeking, and it was, as you admit, and he was right. Here's Scott's view. Scott's view is he was only asking for what they would wind up paying a marketing consultant. And he's right. From that perspective, he's 100% correct. The board asked him to do the deal. Okay? The board asked him to do the deal. And what pissed me off is Chris Dobbins knows this. He was on the board. Chris knows it, okay? Chris Dobbins knows this, okay? He knows it. Okay? Chris Dobbins knows this, okay? So, I have to calm down because every time I think about that, I just get upset all over again. They treated that good man like crap. And so that good man, thanks the Lord, wound up in another place as president of the Marshawn Lynch-owned Oakland Panthers only to see Henry Gardner give them a real deal, his replacement, his executive director. Henry's a good man, but Henry does not understand how to structure a deal to think about a sports organization as a startup. That's why the Oakland Roots are in trouble with them. That's why the Oakland Soul are in trouble with them, because once again, they're going to handle the Roots and Soul just like they handled the A's. You hear what I'm talking about? They're not going to price it properly. They're going to think, you're a business guy. You're rich. 
you're white. That's how they think. That's wrong, folks. I hear it repeated again and again and again and again and again. Racism, I don't care where it comes from, is a mental illness. Don't forget that. That is wrong. Your job is to do a deal. And you're dealing with companies that are small. They don't have a lot of revenue. You help them grow. You don't toss cost on them. If anything, you subsidize them, which is what the city should have done. If you're going to get that involved politically, go all the way. Don't go like halfway. Hey, but the city is known for that. I'm going to, I could, I'm going to do it. Just say I did something. Just like with sports in general. We did. I told my friend Nate Miley not to do that. I said, man, don't say we did something because, and you didn't debrief what you were doing. You had no idea. Like we did that before. I said that to him at a JPA meeting. I said, look, yeah, you did it. You didn't do it right. So please don't do that. Don't at me with this stuff. Enough. Okay? Enough. All right? Enough. Okay? Back to this. Back to this. All right? And then Tim Keown has this thing where he's getting Hanson in a really awful pose. Anyway, goes on to state that Kabul took the exception of City's offer. I read that to you uh, and talked about, said that the financing undetermined on the nine acre site of the yet to be demolished Tropicana Casino Resort, and it'll be demolished. It'll be okay, maybe even a year earlier. All right, now, and I, I made a comment here, and this is bad. Okay. Left unspoken sources say is that is that significant doubt remains whether the deal in Vegas will happen at all, and it will. And the five year gambit was a hedge against ever having to negotiate with the A's again. By the final meeting, Sacramento was already thick in the air. Cobble had made it known the team was in daily conversations with Ronadave and Sacramento, weekly discussions with Salt Lake City. There were those on the Oakland side of the table who believed Sacramento was a done deal before this meeting began, and they weren't the only ones. Broom, the S, the G S E C C E O was in the room during negotiations with Rand Dave, and he told at ESPN he knew Sacramento was getting the A's 10 days before the event, the official announcement. After the publication of this story, representatives from Sacramento and the A's denied that any deal was reached before the two sides completed negotiations on April 3rd. But some fact of the matter is that, all right, Lee Hansen's comment weighs heavy in all of this. And Tim, I'm going to assume isn't familiar with how this is done. You don't say that to people in the meetings, what she said. Then he writes, but after the fourth and final meeting with the A's, that meeting, and after Cobble's visceral objection to the $97 million extension fee, the mayor's staff left the A's offices at 9 and 30 in the morning, 9 30, and reconvened at City Hall to review the details. So 9 30 a.m., all right? And they did, the discussions continued throughout the day. And by early evening, Hansen got Tao's approval to present a revised offer a three-year lease with a $60 million extension fee. Oh, Jesus. I mean, it's just, come on, all right? At 7.15 that night, Hanson called Cobble with a new offer. She said he seemed interested, although he would later, later say the two sides remained far apart, even with the revision, and he thanked her for the call. Yeah, because he went to Sacramento, and, and in Randi, I've met, as John Fisher did, a like partner, team owner to team owner. That's how things are done. Just ask Mark Cuban, okay? Within 24 hours, rumblings that Sacramento's choice filtered out through the Twitter feed of Carmichael Dave, a Sacramento radio personality well-connected to Ron Deven and the Kings. The next morning, Cobble called Hanson at 7.36 a.m. To give her the news, Fisher followed five minutes later with a call to Tao. By 10 a.m. at about the same time, the A's were on a flight to head for De head heading for Detroit, Ron Deve was standing at the podium, wind whipping in the, his hair, thanking his good friend, John Fisher. 
Afterward, Cobble said the decision to choose Sacramento over Oakland was based partly on the abbreviated time frame and partly on factors out of the A's control, such as the expansion team assurances A's Oakland sought from Major League Baseball. The team had to act quickly, he said, to ensure the league office could pull together a 2025 schedule with something other than to be determined next to the team's name. In effect, the A's created an untenable timeline for Oakland and then used it against them. Mm, it looked like actually it was the other way around. You want to know why? Because you want to know how this gets turned around, Tim, by Oakland aggressively making the call and saying, hey, look, we know you need to straighten this out. Let's do this now. You don't wait for the, you don't wait for the A's to call you. But see, if we had a sports commission, as I kept yelling about last year at JPA meetings, and as I've called for, none of this happens. Because then you get sports-oriented people running this thing. Oh, and I'm, I don't mean athletes. I mean people who understand sports facilities and who, who, who know the, how sports facilities work, how negotiations work, and their meaning to the cities and the counties that they're in. All right? In effect, the A's create an untenable timeline for Oakland and they used it against them. <laughs> At the end of the workday in Oakland, Hanson gathered the mayor's staff and headed across the street to Fluid 510, their favorite bar that's owned by Sean Sullivan and his partner, uh, Richard Fuentes, uh, to toast the end and the end of the negotiations, and the parallel paths and the false hope and the reading between the lines. They weren't celebrating the A's imminent departure. So it sounds like they were to me. So much as the conclusion of a seemingly endless and endlessly frustrating back and forth with a team they felt they could never trust. Oh, boo-hoo. You know, this is such like, you know, the whining of amateurs. That's what it is. Well, we're not used to this. And, you know, you make friends with people and you keep talking to them. You keep talking to them. You keep talking to them until you get something going and you maintain the friendship. This is, this is disaster laid out, all right? Complete disaster laid out, okay? Fisher continues to fall forward. Free went in Sacramento. Why? Team owner. To team owner. Because you know why? Ron Deve wants, he's he's paying for access. He knows that with the A's out of Oakland, but with Oakland at the epicenter of arguably the most valuable location for a future Major League Baseball franchise, all right, he knows that he could possibly park Maybe the river cat's in there. Why not? Okay. Why not? All right. And then he goes on 380 million in public money in Vegas. No accountability in Oakland. True. He receives unanimous approval from the owner of 29 owners to move to Vegas. Major League Baseball at the behest of Manfred waives the team's relocation fee because, according to league source, it will be too burdensome to, for Fisher to pay. That's true. So if we say there's a relocation fee of $2 billion, the source said, realistically, how are we going to get that? You spread it out over a long period of time, like uh, 200 years. It's difficult to see the value Fisher brings to you. He says, this is stupid. This is where we get into stupid area. It's difficult to see the value Fisher brings to the other 29 teams. He seems to have benefited from a billionaire's vision of the comfort of low expectations. What? This is this is stupid stuff. All right. I feel I feel ridiculous reading this. All right. But I will I will hug the cactus here. I will hug the cactus here. His front office has yielded playoff teams, cheap, brilliantly constructed playoff teams. But the days are so distant they belong to a different era. His team's payroll is last in the league. Now, mind you, Tim writes all of this, okay? He writes all of this, but then he fails to consider what's going on up here. He fails to consider that salaries went up 49% from 2003 to 2022 baseball salaries, okay, on the average, which means some went over that, like 100%, 
and some went under, but the average is 49%. There was a continuous increase up until uh, from 2003 to 2013, and there was leveling off, and then 2017, there started increasing again. Okay? Why is that important? Because the more a sports organization has to play its players, the more revenue it has to take in to do so. Hence the single purpose stadium. Hence the setup, both in, well, all sports, the NFL, NBA, and Major League Baseball, where the team, be it the Cowboys or the Raiders or the 49ers, or the athletics in Las Vegas get all of the revenue from everything that happens in that facility because they are what is called Stadco. Why? Because they have to pay those players. Why is what I'm saying relevant to what Tim put out? Because the Coliseum is a multi purpose stadium where the A's are stuck in a lease that straight jackets them from a revenue perspective. The city of Oakland under Shang Tao and Lee Hansen don't understand that. They even consider it. They don't know. And they would say they don't care. And I would say, good, quit. Step down. Get out. If you don't understand it and you don't care, don't, let, don't lay your grubby hands on it. And again, Sir Chai, I can get plenty, plenty of competent women to step in and do a better job. You know, you could call Amy Trask, once the president of the Raiders. I should get Amy on here again. In fact, I will. I'll call Amy. I'm sick of this. You really pissed me off, Sir Chai. Okay? It's wrong to think that way about women. Okay? So... He says he seems to have benefited from a billionaire's vision of low comfort of low expectations. No. He's suffering because he's in a straitjacketed role of the Coliseum. That's why he wants to move, because where he's at will bankrupt any organization. Baseball organization. Major League Baseball. His front office has fielded playoff teams. He says, cheaply, brilliantly constructed playoff teams, but those days are so distant they belong to a different era. Why? He says his team's payroll is last in the league, but that doesn't come close to placing in the proper context. The A's 2024 payroll of $60 million is 41% lower than 29th ranked team, the Pittsburgh Pirates, in a league where even the Tampa Bay Del Devil Rays and Detroit Tigers field teams with payrolls of more than $100 million. Since Fisher assumed sole ownership of the team in 2016, the team has had the lowest payroll in baseball three times and has never ranked higher than 24th. Right. But look, they had the same problem with Schott and Hoffman. It's the lease setup that the Coliseum JPA puts you into at the Coliseum, you stupid idiot. Tim, what is wrong with you, man? Ugh. He says, the condemnation of Fisher has been widespread. I don't care. You know, there could be other options. Golden State says he has standard offer. He's, he's not he's coughing up all this stuff that he saw in other places, okay? Meanwhile, Cobble, ever the optimist, good for Dave, has touted the idea that Vegas will cure all ills because it will, that the A's will abandon their money ball ways because they will, and spin like gamblers on tilt when Vegas money rolls in because it's going to. Even that that's true, which it is, and history proves no indication that it will be. Yes, it does. God, this guy is such a, ugh. The A's face. Tim, you don't have any idea what you're freaking talking about. None, all right? In an all-hands Zoom meeting before the official Sacramento announcement, Dave Cobble, excuse me, uh, let me put this down here. Yeah. Uh, in an all-hands meeting, in an all-hands meeting, what he says, in all-hands Zoom meeting, 
Why is it going, oh, that's because I'm touching it, all right? In all hands, Zoom meeting before the official Sacramento announcement, Dave Cowell informed Oakland, oops, excuse me here. Dave Cowell informed Oakland staff that there would be significant layoffs at the end of the season. Wow. Much, and then he goes on, much of the work done by specific, hmm, that's interesting. It's this terms of use, let's see here. Yeah. Let me see if I can do this. I can take this and scroll all the way down uh, and see if I can bring this all the way down here and blank that out. All right. I can't seem to. Anyway, I'm blocked off from. Oh, he's talking about how there would be layoffs. All right. And that's sad. I'm not going to read that in full because that's uh, that's hard even for me to read. Okay. Um, and so. It's a really sad, sad thing. Now, Tim is asking, where can we find your baseball sim world? Oh, right here. It's not active anymore because I haven't rebuilt it. And um, let's see here. It is. But the site itself is still very much active. And that is here. And I will take you to it. So I copy that and I replace Tim's article here, and there it is, all right? That's it. And this is where I talk about, it, this is four minutes and 57 seconds, okay? There. Build a new stadium, deal with the politics that goes with that, or you can even you start here. business simulations. I'll start right now. Yes, for it. I'm Zenny Abraham. I'm Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Sports Business Simulations. I'm the developer and programmer of both the XFL SimWorld and the Oakland and Baseball SimWorld. I want to take a moment just to tell you about the Sports Business Simulations products and how you can sign up to use them for your classroom. The XFL Sim World was developed based around the actual XFL. The XFL was a football league established by the World Wrestling Federation in collaboration with NBC Sports. It took operation in 2001. It also ceased to exist in 2001 due to poor ratings. The challenge for you and your students is to use the XFL Sim World and make the right business decisions to make the XFL last beyond the one year that it did in reality. If you do that, you will not only have high ratings, but gain a $600 million contract from NBC. The second simulation, the Oakland Baseball Sim Road, is our flagship. It's developed around an original set of equations and a system dynamics model I created in 1997. When L.U. Harris, the mayor of Oakland, dispatched me to find buyer teams to buy the Oakland Athletics and keep them in the city of Oakland. One of the people who was interested in buying the organization only had past financial numbers and wanted a projection. Instead of doing a linear projection for this person, I decided to do what's called a system dynamics model. When I met Dan Rasher, my business partner, who's also the sport management program director at the University of San Francisco, I told him I was working on the Oakland Baseball Sim World. Dan and I took the Oakland Baseball Sim World and the XFL Sim World and established SBS. And over the past four years have improved our products on a continual basis for use in your classroom. In the Oakland Baseball Sim World, you have a choice of 110 annual decision options over a 15 year period. Your objective and the objective of your students is to keep the athletics consistently in the black always making money and in the playoffs or winning the world series as often as possible over a 15 year period you have a number of ways that you can achieve this objective you can have high payroll high player development expenditures high marketing expenditures or the classic a's model with low payroll high player development expenditures and moderately high marketing expenditures you can build a new stadium deal with the politics that goes with that or 
you can even decide you're simply going to stay in the existing stadium and see how well you can perform fiscally with the team in that environment. I'm very proud of both of our products, and I encourage you to give us consistent feedback on their improvement. But the question is, how can you sign up to use them? All you have to do is go to any link on this page that's marked Sign Up for Sims. It will take you to our CAGI page. CAGI is our e-commerce supplier. You can use that page to pay for a simulation account. It's just $12.50 per student per class. Or university can send us a check, which would equal the number of students in the class times the $12.50 per student per class. It's really that simple. We can divide your class with you up into cohorts such that the best cohort, of course, wins a competition. We can work with you to develop any kind of method you want to better work with your students to use our simulation. We'll even make changes in the simulation within reason that are not wholesale. And generally within a one or two day time period, if you call us, but call me specifically at 510-387-9809 or send us an email. The point is, we're there for you 24 and 7, as often as possible, and extremely happy that you're here to work with us. Well, that's my brief, brief introduction to sports business simulations. Welcome. And again, feel free to contact me or anyone else on this site with questions that you have. Again, thank you and welcome to SBS. Yeah, that was my first startup and very proud of what we built. This is the homepage here, still up. And uh, the, the game itself, or sim, as Michael Bean liked to put it, is not available. It hasn't been. It's dormant, down, done. Thank you, Tim. And uh, the reason is that you're welcome. Thank you for asking. Uh, and the reason is it's very sad. I, I, I'll just candidly say this. Um, the main, the main mistake I made, and for you young people out there who are just getting into programming and game development, I, I say don't do. Don't ever learn someone's very esoteric programming language with the idea of developing a game or company around it because you're at their mercy of their server. There's no other place to go. It's not like, say, I'll, I'll, build, I'll develop this in Unity or C, okay? Um, or just entirely JavaScript, which, you know, that's a hefty, that's a heavy lift depending on the, the, considering what I was trying to do, but eh, maybe I'll give it another thought at any rate. Um, <clears throat> Forio macro language was the programming language, an offshoot of hypertext markup language. And it, what it, what it did was see system dynamics, I'll have to explain this is a modeling paradigm that was created by an, a professor Jay Forrester at MIT in 1956. And it focuses on several different types of what are called equations, type, equations or variable, variable types, excuse me. One called stocks. Stocks are expressed as squares Stocks are things that accumulate, like population or frustration or dirt or energy power. Then there is an inflow variable which goes in like that, okay? So you have the stock here, and this is the inflow variable that goes into it like that, okay? All right? And so the stock is like, like this, all right? And so... What happens is that the inflow variable causes the stock to increase. So let's say you have water out of, a, out of a faucet and the stock is a bucket. So the water goes in, right? This is actually a differential equation that I'm describing to you, but it's in object oriented form, okay? So what causes this stock to decrease? So that's where you build your, if we, you, this becomes your outflow variable. So I'm going to make this, okay? And my outflow variable goes here, right? That way, out, okay? So I have my inflow coming here, 
outflow variable going there, right? Why? My drain, which is causing it to decrease. So think about the model that I just set up for you. And think about it. I, I described it as a bucket of water. We know why the bucket of water increases and we know why it decreases. But let's change the stock we call water to population. What causes the population to increase? Births. What causes it to decrease? Deaths. And that gets, gets us to the other variable, which is called the converter variable, which essentially sends the signal to the flow variable of the rate. In other words, what's the rate of growth in population? Or what's the death rate? So if you think about the model that I just gave you, that's the basis for thinking about system dynamics, how systems behave. Feedback between different types of systems, tortoises or and hares, who is the predator and prey, or the famous beer game where you're running a beer establishment. That game is famous in system dynamics. I've studied system dynamics since I was 17 years old. I'll be 62 this year. As you can tell, I love system dynamics. It is a kind of religion, well, not my main religion, that I follow in terms of how to think about life, how to think about the earth, how to think about circumstances, how to think about businesses, how to think about finances, flow variables, inflow, outflow, stocks. And when stocks become what are called oven variables, where something goes in, cooks for a while, and gets released. All right? Michael Bean, I met on the Lark. And he and I met for a lunch in 2005, okay? Um, and so, and so, and so, Mark, this is this takes me off. I want to I want to talk about system dynamics, okay? And I want you to focus on what I'm saying to you. This is really important. I want you know why I want people to think. I'm tired of all of this mush mush. I want you to think. Even if you build a model that disagrees with mine, we all call the mental models, right? It's a way of thinking about what's happening in our environment. Anyway. I met Michael Bean on LARP. I had been fired by Jerry Brown after because I accused him of racism regarding the Super Bowl. And that action, by the way, is illegal on his part. And for a year, I was depressed. I didn't know what I was going to do. And then I really took stock of what I had done. Started the first sports commission. I still had the NFL as a friend and ally because they didn't like the way the city of Oakland treated me. And now I'm going on my 20th year credential to cover the NFL draft. So they started because of the way the city of Oakland treated me. All right. But out of that, I thought, you know, I'll go back to modeling. But I realized I wanted on my own to build what's called an object oriented system dynamics model. I didn't know how to do it but I wanted to do it. And so it was during that journey that I found Michael Bean right there in San Francisco at Foil Business Simulations. This is in the year 2000, uh, excuse me, late late 2000. It's almost 2000, it's not 2001, excuse me, not 2000. Because 2000, I was working for the sports commission, uh, on the sports commission I created, and then through, through the early part of 2001. Uh, but I built, I had this idea for first the XFL sim world and then the Oakland baseball sim world. But I, what I call it was I call it the Oakland athletics micro world. And Mike Crowley was the president of the A's at the time. And I had befriended him. And I told him, I, I, told, I told a number of people of the A's I was working on this model and they didn't know what to expect. So they were, you know, Hey, show us when you're finished. And, um, to make a long story short, I did. And but I also sold it to Dan Rasher, and that's how we became partners. So Dan said, I never seen anything like this. 
And I said, yeah, we should start a company. And the reason why I come to befriend Dan was because Robert Bob was in the middle of trying to get a downtown ballpark built for the athletics. Robert Bob was my boss that he had to let me go because Jerry told him to fire me, but we were still friends. And so I was helping him behind the scenes. And I found Dan as an economist who would make an, a positive argument for the ballpark downtown. So Dan and I had lunch and went to his office and I was showing him what I was working on in terms of the Oakland baseball sim world, and the XFL sim world. And he says, I've never seen anything like this. And I said, hey, we should start a company. He goes, yeah, that's a good idea. We call it. I, and I said, sports. And he said, business. And I said, simulations. And that's how sports business simulations was, was established. I mean, as, a, as an idea. And then I got a friend of mine to be our attorney. And he set us up with a, he made some mistakes along the way. Uh, Bill, Bill, Bill uh, Taylor did. But Bill had the right idea. Bill said, I want black folks to invest in you because this is amazing. And, you know, you're going to get somebody white investing and they're not going to treat you right and everything. Of course, he got so he he did that. And out of that outreach, he wrote letters and everything and introduced me to a lot of people. He got Mark Anthony Jones, who I had been acquainted with, but I had no idea was filthy rich. And Mark said, Zinni, let's meet. I showed him our proposal. I showed him the model. Five minutes. He says, Zinni, I'm down for 25000 He wrote the check. Shortest meeting I ever had. Boom. Got it. That's how, That was the birth. And you see, he had a pledge to put in up to 100000 So I thought we were on our way. Okay. Um, it was really a heady time. The difference, too, is we got a number of calls about going into the gambling business. But if I had made the sports business simulations, sim, sim games into gambling devices at that time, I'd have been thrown in jail. I talked to John Dan about it. Dan, we went through the law. We tried to figure out every loophole we could, but nothing seemed to work out in the favor of a small company like ours. So we just didn't do it. Um, today it's different. Okay. Uh, so we wound up in 40 colleges and high schools uh, including in London, and had a good following from from 2003 to 2010. We arguably created the field of baseball business dynamics. We just didn't write a full textbook. I got to a point where those students would run the game, but they would lose a ton of money, like 300 million over a 15 year run. I thought, you know what? In real life, what would Major League Baseball do? And what I, I researched it, and that's when I happened upon something called contraction. Or now they call it lawyerizing, all right? This is while Dave Samson was doing his thing, I was doing my thing, okay? Uh, so I built in, I built contraction into the model. So that if you lost 120 million in one year, boom, you got contracted. I had one sleep on me. <laughs> it just shut off on me. It said I got contracted. I said, well, yeah, well, you lost money. So I said, let's go back and I'll show you a run. Just try another run and make you know some decisions regarding new stadium and ticket prices. There are different ways to you know achieve the objective, but let's get you one that is going to get you the money you need. It really was a good teaching mechanism. Okay. Uh, she came out of it, got an A. Okay, very proud of what I built. What happened? Mike Bean of Forio, first of all, Mike Bean will glass is saying my, my, we're like my brothers. So I really feel like, to this day, violated. But they made constant changes in Forio macro language. And where you go wrong is, for example, if you're relying on their back end, and your front end has dials, like for example, for ticket prices and everything, and those dials don't work, you've got a number of students using it, then you got a problem. Because what happens is that they didn't tell you, hey, we're updating our code. So now you have to rewrite your drop down code. Oh, unfortunately, I didn't have to do that because I had one, said everything on one page, right? 
So I just have to go to like, you know, line 716 and boom, there it is. Okay. All right. But they didn't tell me when. So I was consistently caught behind the eight ball with that problem. Because the more they were off into work they were doing with Ford Motor Company or somebody else, the less attention they're paying to what I needed. But the biggest problem of all was they, I thought we're going to cut my server cost in, by half because it was $250 per, uh, per month. But Mike didn't want me to pay it on a monthly basis. He wanted me to pay it in a, whole, a big chunk. And I objected. And what my doggone fool self should have done was thought, you know what? I'll just park this 250 here and save until the you know end of the year. But I objected to that. And, and it, you know, I don't understand to this day why he was so adamant about doing that. But we had, I think, some style differences. And but I like Michael Bean, so I just leave, I'll just leave it at that. We just it just didn't work out the way I thought it was. And I think. What Kristen Herrera, who's my first hire, and warned me about when we went to Michael's ho- my, we went to Mike's home, and they got into a near went to blows, and it wasn't him. Michael's not the kind of person to throw blows. She is. All right, I hired the right person. That's what I'm talking about. Sir, talking about how they're hiring the right person. You, you you hire a woman who knows what she's doing, who's aggressive and who's intellectually with it. That was Kristen Herrera. All right. She wanted, she said, Zinni, my husband can do this, Ben. But see, I didn't know, I knew Ben, of course, but I didn't know. And what I was worried about was losing time on getting the company started by having Ben build this interface between system dynamics and whatever programming language he was going to use. See, that was like left field for me. So I didn't want to take the, I didn't want to take the leap. So I made the decision right there at Mike's house to go with Foria. And Kristen warned me about, that was 2003. She warned me about what happened and it eventually did happen in 2010. He sandbagged me on prices. And said, if I didn't pay it, he was going to shut me down. But me, like my damn fool self, instead of, figuring out a way to nice him to death. I basically went berserk on him and it was like 13 pages of emails like, heck with you, fuck you, fuck you, right? That sort of thing, all right? So he says, fine, I'm going to disconnect you. I said, fine, I'm going to take my website. So I called a friend of mine who said, hey, you know, all you have to do is call a friend of mine over in Berkeley. They'll house the rest of your site. So I did that. And I did it just in time before you could shut down my access. Whew. Okay. And that's what happened. I felt like Michael Bean killed my kid. I felt like to this day, Michael Bean killed my kid. It was the second worst thing ever to happen to me in my career history. The first thing was Jerry Brown firing me for accusing him of being racist. The third thing was the, the city of Oakland not retaining me after I accused Ezra Rapport of trying to lie to this county of Alameda regarding model outputs out of a model I created from scratch that could be used for any redevelopment project area in the state of California. That was way back in, ni- in 1987. All right? So... Yeah, that's what happened to my my baby. And that's why I leave this up, because what happened was I was trying to figure out. I remember when I finished it. I finished it at. Six thirty in the morning. On September 6th. Of the year 2022. I sent out an email to 90 people because we were supposed to be on G4 Tech TV um, that week. And so we went over to Mike's office. We were supposed to be on, because G4 Tech TV was also on KTVU. So we had an interview interview with Brian Bandmiller, 
Well, that was separate. We had an interview with Brian Bam Miller on KTVU, and they were on G4 Tech TV. We were headed in the right direction, folks. But you would say, what got us into a position where that cost became an issue? The other problem was that Dan Rasher and Mark Anthony Jones and I were the board. They took a vote to make me charge $10 per student per class rather than what we should have been charging according to the survey study that I had commissioned to be done, $27. And arguably, we could have charged $40. If we charged $40 per student per class, we would have been off to the races. It was my job. They weren't doing the job. They didn't think about me. They literally were running me in the poorhouse because Mark had said he was going to invest more and he didn't. I'm supposed to suffer behind that? So when I started Zenny 62 Media this time, I arranged it so that sort of thing would never happen again. No, 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 no. Uh uh. Not at all, okay? So if you're creative, you have to take steps. You're starting a company, you need to take steps to make absolutely certain that you are protected because the people around you, by their nature, are not going to think about you. They're going to think about them. And that's why if you're starting a company, it's better to have a true group of people. You're doing it together rather than people who say, as Bill Taylor did as our attorney, we know I'm going to get rich off of you. Or as Michael Benaforio said, you know what? We are going to be your consultant and we're going to get rich off of you. I heard that from a number of people. We're going to get rich off you. Okay. So I'm basically being sucked dry, right? Seriously. That's what happened. Okay. So I hope, by telling this to people, this is a learning, a learning. All right. So anyway, there you go. That's probably more than you bargained for. It's good two hours and six minutes. But Tim, you asked. <laughs> Very proud of the Oakland baseball. Someone, is there a chance of bringing it back? I'll tell you this. If someone out there, I still have the base equations. If someone out there wants to take another crack at this and, you know, can invest $2 million, yeah. And I say that I don't want to linkle and dime this like before. I want to do this the right way because there's still no – that was the other problem. There's still no game for this. But here's the thing. I still have people asking me about this because there's nothing else like it. There's nothing else like it. And imagine the scenarios we can run today. Ooh. Okay. All right, folks. Like I said, seriously, keep that in mind. If someone of you out there has got... Also, I'm looking for sponsors for our NFL draft coverage. Subscribe to Zenny62 on YouTube. And please bookmark zennyreport.com and zenny62blog.com. Or make it easy on yourself. Bookmark zinni62.com. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you.